Hey, so here we're going to cover how you can use your SKU to quickly identify and then replenish a product. Now, this only works for first time creation or if you don't have multiple suppliers for that same ASIN. However, uh, we've worked with a lot of clients in the past and they were just randomly creating SKUs and they really had uh, no structure to it. However, the way that we handle our SKUs, now remember, a SKU is an acronym for stock keeping unit and that's exactly how we use it. Um, we want to be able to look at a SKU and know when we're was the first time we purchased it, what was the price we purchased it at, and who the supplier was at that time that we purchased from, along with that supplier's item number to make it easier for us to replenish. Now, of course, once you scale and grow larger, you're going to want to use an Excel or Google Sheet to keep track of that, and then when you get really big, you're gonna to want to implement some sort of software, whether it's custom or a third-party software, where you can analyze your entire inventory, replenish it quickly, and place POs or purchase orders with your suppliers with the click of a button. But for now, what we're gonna start with is how you can use your SKU as a form of looking at your product and getting some information insight about that ASIN. I'm going to be adding this Kirkland Signature product, vitamin E, to our catalog and I'm gonna show you what that SKU is going to look like. Okay, so this is a Kirkland product, so the supplier is Costco. Uh, you can put the date in here, uh, we do. However, it is not necessary since if you go to manage inventory, you'll see that the created at date is right here. It's the top one right here. August 16th, 2013 is when we created it. And the last time the status was changed on it, anything with this ASIN was changed on it was on January 24th of 2020 for us. So with that being said, if we take a look here, you'll see we have the date of creation, month and year. We have the price we got it for. We have the supplier initials, CO for Costco. And then we have the UPC. If the supplier has an item number, I would recommend using the item number, it just makes it much simpler to reorder. Let's say it's time to replenish. If I'm here in my managed inventory, I say, okay, this listing, I'm running out of quantity soon based on velocity. I'm gonna be out of uh, stock within the next two weeks. My supplier has a one week lead time, so let me place this order now. So by the time I receive the product, package the product, ship the product, I'll have some inventory in Amazon before I run out of stock. And I could quickly look at my SKU and know that, okay, I purchased this from Costco. Okay, here's the last price that I purchased it for. And here's the UPC. So when I put together my purchase order, my PO to send to the rep, the account rep over at Costco, it'll just be quick, easy, and effortless. So the way that that would look if it was today, we would put 10, 22, 19, and I'm gonna say that we're getting this product for $8.20. So I put the 08 followed by 20. If you feel like you're gonna be selling products that cost you more than 100, then you might wanna start with a 008 decimal 20, followed by the supplier initials and then the item number. So just make one up here for myself. I'm gonna say this is their item number and then I go forward and I handle the rest. It's a nice, simple process, but instead of having random SKUs, your stock keeping unit, how you keep stock of uh, all your units, uh, have a system in place right from the get-go, so as you grow, you can replace that with something bigger, but at least you have a foundation for when you're getting started. Stay lit. We are going to look at how to piggyback off another ASIN, meaning that there is a product that is in the Amazon catalog, could be found on amazon.com. You have that product and now you want to create that same listing and sell on that listing.